Hello and welcome to the Voices of the Vic podcast with me, Ben Ayton, and Mike Duffy. Uh, we're here for a very special episode this time, uh, and we're delighted to be joined by Watford defender Christian Cabaselli. Uh, Christian, thank you so much uh, for sparing your time with us tonight. I know it's a very busy schedule for you at the moment with you being in Austria uh, with the, the team on your pre-season camp. So first off, how are you doing? Hi, Ben. Hi, Mike. Uh, I'm OK. I'm OK. It's been uh, it's been a good start of uh, of preseason. Uh, I think we we work uh, we work really well uh, the, this week in in Austria, and uh, and yeah we 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 start to 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 know the the manager uh, more and more day day after day. That's fantastic to hear. So it's all going well so far. You're t- two weeks in, isn't it? Two weeks so far. Yeah, we start. Uh, we started the the third week now uh, in Austria, and uh, and yeah, now we 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 speed up the the the, the trainings, the intensity, everything, uh, with the aim to be uh, to be ready for for the first uh, the first of August. Yeah, you you mentioned there how you you speeding it up with the training and everything. Can you? What's a, a typical day in pre season look like? What's Rob got you guys doing that might be different to what you've done under different coaches? Uh, in terms of schedule, I think it's quite similar. So we used to to train twice twice a day, uh, 10, uh, 10 a.m. and uh, around uh, around 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. It depends. Uh, but after, in terms of, of the sessions, uh, the the difference that I noticed with the other manager is that we we are doing a, a longer session in the in the morning and uh, like uh, 45 50 minutes session in the afternoon, uh, still with the intensity with the eye. Uh, but with some manager, they, they like it to to do like one hour and a half for both sessions. Uh, but the manager always said that everything that uh, we do, we have to do it with intensity. And uh, that's why we we are doing for for the moment. Well, I've seen some of the lads calling off in the river or the pond. I, I haven't seen you in it, Christian, but were, were you taking photos at that point? Uh, I, I wasn't there because I didn't lose in the didn't lose in the tournament. So yeah, it was a a, a little bet between us. The the last team oh, of the right. tournament, the last team of the tournament uh, had to go in um, in uh, in the water. And uh, yeah, uh, we were we were second with my team, so we we were safe and and dry after after the training session. Oh, that's Thank fantastic! You it did look cold. So yeah, I bet you're thankful you was on the winning side. <laughs> yeah, because you know, uh, it's always we always try to to be competitive, and and uh, this brings a uh, little bit more the, into the game, something something more into the game, and and yeah, it helps as well to to create some some bond between between the players because um, yeah, some of uh, most of the players they were here uh, for for many years in Watford, but I think it's the, the the first time that we are here together at the at the same moment, so. So yeah, it, cre- it creates some link and and some some good uh, good atmosphere around around the team. Yeah, we we're going into a, the the season with a, a new head coach, obviously from from last season, Rob Edwards. What what are your first impressions of Rob? Yeah, I'm impressed. I'm impressed because uh, you can you can feel that he's uh, he's ambitious and uh, he will not hide uh, behind the fact that he never coached in uh, in championship. Uh, he wants uh, he, he's straightforward with us, and he, he, he wants to to win the league, and he's he's trying to to prepare preparing the team to 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 get uh, to get the league at at the end of the season. So so yeah, he's a modern modern manager. He wants he wants us to play in front foot and don't wait for the for the opponent to to get the control of the game. He wants us to to be on uh, to be on control during the game. So. So yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to to play the first competitive game with the with the squad. Yeah, not long now to that opening game of the season against Sheffield United on a Monday night in front of the Sky cameras. Um, sorry to bring it back to last season, though. I know you probably don't want to think about last season. Watford fans definitely don't want to think about last season. But how did you feel last season when the club was relegated from uh, from the Premier League? And and do you feel like things have improved in the squad since um, Rob Edwards' arrival? First of all, it was it was painful. It was painful because um, we were ne- we were uh, we were never uh, uh, we were not able to to compete at at some point, and that was the the most difficult to 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 accept. I would say, 
Um, two years ago, we we were still in the in the race in, in the last game, uh, but now it was like we were we were not good enough uh, for for the league for a long long period of time. So this was this was really painful. Uh, you know, I'm 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 living I'm living in Watford, so I, 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 sometimes I met some some Watford fans, and yeah, it's even more painful for for me because I, I have to. To, to make some some apologize for for the team and I see uh, what for some in the town so so yeah it was it was really hard really painful but now we we start uh, we start a new a new season uh, hopefully we will learn from our mistakes what we didn't do last last season and uh, and yeah we just want to bring some some joy to uh, to to the fans because yeah the, the 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 home the home form was really poor last last season and we want to to Changes and, and try to recreate the the, the, the link that we have um, that we had the the first five years when we were where we were in uh, in the Premier League. So we are working towards that, and I think that's why the, the manager wants us to to be on the front foot because as long as you give everything on the pitch, you can be bad, you can have a bad day, and the fans will forgive you. And last season we didn't have this uh, this spirit in us, and this is our our fault. Yeah, uh, hopefully, you know, things vastly improve and we're all ready and itching for the uh, first game of the season as fans. So I can't imagine what it's like as players ready for it. But just turning the attention away from Watford a little bit, just regarding yourself as a player, we obviously know you as a defender. But is it true that you actually started out as a striker? And if so, how did that switch from striker to defender come about? Yes, that's true. Until my 23 years old, I was I was a striker. And uh, uh, when I was in the uh, second league in Belgium, we were about to start uh, the season. And one week before, uh, a defender got injured. It was like a small, uh, small injury. And the manager came to me and said, listen, uh, I don't think you will be in my starting 11 as a striker, but we need a player at central back. And I think you have everything to, to be a good central back. So um, I will put you there and we will see what will happen. And, I played. Uh, I played the first game of the season. We won four four zero, and uh, and I stayed. Uh, I stayed in in the team uh, uh, all uh, all the season. So so yeah, I was I was really lucky. That that changed my my career uh, because uh, three three years after I signed in in the Premier League. So so yeah, it was uh, it was a good moment for me. Would you fancy going in goal with um, Dan Batman or Maduka Okoy got injured? <laughs> why not? Why not? You can uh, you never say never in football. Uh, why not? If uh, if maybe I have to when one of the goalkeeper gets a red card and I have I have to go in the goal. Why not? I I, I have I have to try uh, because I always choose the the position where you, where you you want less. So as a striker, you have to stay up front. Midfielder, you have to run too much. So it's not for me. <laughs> uh, but defender, defender and goalkeeper, yeah. yeah, why not? Why not? That's fantastic. Uh, before you arrived into England, though, you, uh, you played obviously in Belgium, but I didn't know you actually played in Bulgaria and you played for Lou de Um I think you won a title over there, mate. Did you win a cup as well? Yes, that was uh, the year before I changed my my position, so I was still a striker. And uh, right. yeah, I, I I wanted to try uh, to try something. Something else because uh, I was in the same club for for ten years and I get this offer from from Bulgaria. So I say, why not? I will I will try to go there and see how, how it goes. It was it was a good experience, especially um, I would say for for the human part because it was the first time I was living alone um, at twenty three at uh, twenty years old. Uh, so it helps me to build my. Uh, my personality as a, as a man of the pitch because you know the there is not a lot of people who speak English in Bulgaria, so it, I, I had really to stay strong in my head to to try to 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 play my football and yeah I I, I won my my first two titles. It's only in Bulgaria, but it's still titles. So yeah, it was a good experience for me. Yeah, you, you you mentioned there. Obviously, you've you've played in in these leagues before, but in 2016, it, it finally happened. You signed from a uh, Genk for uh, on a five year contract for Watford. How did you feel when you heard a Premier League team wanted to sign you? Because we were Premier League team at the at the time, and was it always your dream to come over to England? Yes, I was. 
for me, I was over the moon when I heard that Watford was interested. Uh, you know, I had uh, I had as well some some other other offers in in other country, but when a Premier League team start to be interested in you, you you just want to make everything is possible to go in the Premier League, and that's what uh, what I did. Uh, so uh, so yeah, and then the good thing is that uh, I was uh, I was close from from London, so to go to Belgium, it's it's easy. You take the train in two hours, you you are in Belgium. So everything was was perfect for me to 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 come in in England and to try uh, to try to play uh, in this league. I think the your first manager at Watford that season was Walter Mazzari as well. What was he like to play under? Yeah, it was it was a little bit strange to be honest because he didn't speak English, so we had always a translator with him. So maybe uh, it was too difficult to get the what he wanted uh, exactly from from the player because you know when a manager says something, there with the emotions as well, and when you lose time for for the translation, you lose this uh, emo emotions and this uh, impact on on the player. But in terms of tactic, for me it was perfect because I didn't have any formation at at centre back, so I was um, I, 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 I didn't have any any other choice that I, I had to learn during the games, during the training session, uh, my body shape, all these small details to 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 become a bit a better defender, and um, and it helped me to to get this uh, this detail. So for me at that time it was. Maybe the the, the 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 perfect fit for my uh, for my uh, for my career. And you also scored your first goal for Watford away that season as well, away at West Brom in a three-one defeat. And I, I know the result isn't what exactly what you would have wanted to come away with, but it must have been a special moment to get your first Premier League goal. Yes, uh, of course, of course. Especially it was uh, it was against Ben Foster. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, was, Did you remind uh, me of that when he signed? Yeah, when uh, because I didn't realize it straight away, and one time I I I saw a photo from my goal, and I saw it was in the goal. So, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was even better, uh, even many years after. But yeah, it was another another dream completed. Uh, first was to play in the Premier League after scoring the Premier League. Uh, to be honest, I knew that I will be in uh, match of the day the, <laughs> this night. So. I, w I was uh, I was I was happy because me I was watching match of the day with my brother uh, late at night uh, in Belgium. So to be uh, to be on there with uh, with my goal, it was it was special moment. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine it's uh, it, it's something that you'll you'll never forget. Now, uh, as we said, you you've been at Watford for near near enough six years now. Wanted to test your memory if you can. Obviously, <laughs> Watford are known for the head coaches and you know the the amount of head coaches we have. Since you joined, you've had eleven head coaches, but that's including caretakers. Do you think you could name all eleven since yes. you've been at the club? Easy, I think. Yeah. For the first one was uh, Walter Mazzari, yeah. uh, Ravi, uh, Marco Silva, Ravi Gracia, uh, Kike Sanchez Flores, uh, we had Aidan Mullins, uh, Nigel Person, uh, again uh, to finish the season, uh, Aidan Mullins. Mm. Uh, after we started with uh, Vladimir Ivic. Cisco Munoz. Uh, so after Cisco, it was uh, Claudio Ranieri, Roy Hodgson, and now Rob Edwards. Wow, they've absolutely yeah. smashed that. As you were reading them, I was taking them off in order as well. That's brilliant. That is cover. <laughs> yeah, I have a good, I have a good memory. I was yeah. good at school. It's easy for me. No, very impressive. <laughs> to, to be honest, uh, I. I for me, it's, it's perfect. Uh, I would say it's perfect. It's not perfect to have eleven managers, but you know, I, I'm studying and I get my badges to to be to be a manager. So, to have eleven managers in six years time, it gives you a lot of exercise for for the practice and everything. So, yeah, it it will it will it will help me if I finish to be a a, a manager uh, at the end of my career. Yeah, definitely. Massive congratulations on um, passing um, the UEFA age, um, wasn't it? Um, you, you did it with the Belgian Federation, uh, with the rest of the team. And I think, was you um, working with Watford Academy uh, as well to help you get those badges? 
Yeah, so we had uh, the possibility with the Belgian Federation to get uh, two badges in uh, instead of two years in one year. So I take uh, I I took I took my chance and uh, yeah I did my uh, my assessment with uh, with uh, with uh, the on the on the sixteen uh, team academy academy team in Watford and uh, and yeah I I liked it I liked it and I I keep uh, I keep doing some some uh, some training session to them uh, when I have time during during the season just to uh, to help them because they they ask me if. If I can come sometimes to get the message, it will be, it will have more impact for, uh, coming for me than maybe from them. So uh, yeah, it's something that I love. Try to try to help the kids and try to help the club uh, whenever I can. And we all know you're a massive inter football manager as well, so that must be helping as well. Yeah, of course, of course, it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot, uh, even if it's different because you know. In football manager, you don't really get the, the 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 face of your of your players when you explain something. And I remember my first training session with the under sixteen, I was so stressed. Then I saw the players; they were saying, "What is he talking about?" So it was it was like, uh, yeah, you know, you when uh, when you when I go on the pitch now, I I don't have any stress. And now you you start to give training session to the kids, and you it's like you don't know anything about football. So yeah, it was it was a good experience. Oh, brilliant. As Mike says, you've been at the club for six years now as well, which is a great landmark to reach. But it's not just on the football pitch where you've had your where, where you've done your work. It's off the pitch as well. Uh, you've done a lot of work supporting the newly fa- uh, formed Women's of Watford and also the WE campaign as well. Can you talk us through how all that came about and what it involves? Yeah, for the for the women of Watford, uh, I, had, uh, I had the had a chance to to have uh, an interview with them and with the, the Premier League. And uh, and they asked me to be their, their ambassador, and I and I say yes because I think it's important that the stadiums uh, are open for for everybody, uh, male, female, uh, uh, all other communities, LGBTQ plus. Uh, so football needs to be a big, how uh, to say this, a big party for everyone, and you can see it now with the with the Euro, uh, the women Euro. Uh, Old Trafford was was full yesterday, so a good thing uh, to see is it, football needs to be open. It's the most popular sport in in the world, so it needs to open, to be open for for everybody. And um, yeah, about about the other thing, I always try to 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 give back to the community what what I have. Uh, I always say that I'm lucky to be where I am. Uh, I don't have any 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 particular issue like you know. Uh, uh, how, how, how I will um, I will uh, put food in my fridge, how I will put gas in my in my car. So if I can maybe give one hour, one hour and a half of my time to to make people think about other things, I will do it with uh, with uh, I would say this with a big pleasure because we have we have this power to to have this voice, to have the disability to to influence the mood of, of, of a lot of people. So we need, we need to try to do our best to, to, to spread positive, positive vibes when, when it's difficult for, for other people. Yeah, I, I think you've actually answered some of my next question anyway, but the, the season after you joined Watford, you was awarded the club's Community Ambassador of the Year Award. How, how important is it to, to build that relationship with the community? As you say, you live in Watford as well. So that must be something that you're massive on doing. Yes, it's it's important. It's as well. It's important for for my kids. You know, uh, I want them to to have this um, this uh, this value. Like you have to share uh, with with people in 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 need, and you have to share your time whenever you can. Uh, so yeah, to be to be able to live in Watford and and it gives me maybe the things. Um, it, it's it's easier for me to to do more stuff with with the community because I'm 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 around I'm around the city. So. So yeah, for me, for me, something natural is nothing, nothing uh, spectacular or exceptional. I, I'm just, I'm just being myself, you know. Um, I, I, when I remember when I was a kid, I was so happy to see a football, a football player, and now I'm, I have the chance to put, to put smile on, on, on the kids' faces. For me, it's, it's incredible when you see, when you see kids smiling when, you, when they see, they see you. So. So yeah, anytime, anytime when I can help, I, I try to do to do my bit. 
Yeah, it must be so rewarding to see those little smiles on the on the children's faces when they see a professional footballer go over to them and give them the time and they've like but they've got the same dreams of what you've had and hopefully that helps them reach their dreams as well and be like, I want to be a footballer as well or I want to do something else. And it's just so nice to for you to be giving your time to everyone else who yeah, it's just fantastic, Cabba. Um, in in 2018 19 season, Watford had an incredible season. We recorded a highest ever Premier League finish. We also reached the FA Cup final. Is that season, uh, in that season, you featured 36 times in all competitions? Is that the most enjoyable season you reckon you've had at the club? Yes, definitely. Definitely. Uh, uh, because uh, I had the feeling that this season, we were like almost uh, uh, on, on, not unbeatable, but we had this, this this power and this confidence in in the team that we could achieve anything. And obviously, to 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 reach uh, an FA Cup final, it's something that Watford have done uh, just once before. So, so yeah, it was it was uh, the best the best season when since uh, since I was in Watford, and. Uh, yeah, it's a shame that uh, we finished like this, but still, uh, I think everybody was was at their at their top level, and it's even uh, I would say more a shame that the next season we were not able to stay in the league because we were we were ambitious, we we were looking forward to play maybe for the top seven, top eight to try to get a European place, but um, we were not able to to keep the same form, so. So yeah, but the, this season was uh, was exceptional. Yeah, I can I can imagine it, it must have been incredible. And like you say, unfortunately, the the season after we uh, we couldn't quite hit the heights that we wanted to. We were probably maybe pushed, hoping to push higher uh, than the the season before. Um, uh, jumping forwards uh, a, a little bit in terms of the, the seasons now, um, back to when it was the, the pandemic and, and there was no fans in the stadium and uh, games were being closed, uh, played behind closed doors. What what was it like playing with no crowds? It, it must have been horrible. Yeah, it was, uh, it was terrible. It was terrible because you, you play, you play football for the fans to get uh, this, uh, this adrenaline when you go on the pitch, when you score a goal, when you, uh, when you hear the stadium screaming and, um, Everything, everything was off for 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 one year, one year and a half, something like this. So I think at that time we we really realized that uh, football without fans in, is 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 nothing, and um, you know it's, it's, it was like some some friendly games, and you don't create the same problems uh, as well to the top teams as it would be with 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 the crowds because you don't play the same the same football with uh, with people shouting at you with uh, with. With people putting pressure on you so it was totally different and i'm still convinced that if this season uh was normal we will we will be in the in the we will still be in the, in the premier league because we we would be able to build on the the liverpool victory definitely yeah i was smiling there because that was literally my next question as well <laughs> i was going to say do you reckon if fans were allowed in, we would have stayed up that season? Because like you say, that, that incredible night against Liverpool, the 3-0 victory at home, Vicarage Road was rocking and we was like the 12th man as well. And I, I strongly believe we would have stayed up if fans were allowed in the stadium. Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, it was even louder than than the, the quarter-final against Crystal Palace. Uh, I remember that day I, I, I was saying, yeah, wow. What, what an atmosphere and and after we played against the against Liverpool in uh, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the next uh, the next season it was it was more than the game against Crystal Palace so yeah it's a it's a shame because as I, as I said if we were able to build on this on this win uh, we would stay we would stay in the league yeah absolutely but to be fair after all of the behind closed doors, games and everything. It spanned over two seasons. At the end of the, the second behind closed door um, season, we obviously got promoted and it was an absolutely amazing thing to watch as fans. You know, we were watching it on Hive Live and, you know, everyone, you saw some fans went down to the stadium after the Millwall game. We obviously saw the famous shirt that you come out onto the pitch in. Where did the idea of that come from? The, the, with yeah. the local money's please, obviously. Yeah, it came from uh, from the game we played against them uh, against Bournemouth uh, away, 
uh, you know, with, uh, with all the incidents at the end of the game, uh, Lerma, who, who get uh, Nate uh, send, send off. And um, after on Twitter, I saw a picture with uh, the local man is pleased um, uh, sentence uh, with a picture of Lerma laughing. And it was from, from Bournemouth's uh, Twitter account. And I was thinking, yeah, we are we are second in the league. We are fighting to get promoted automatically. And you just around the sixth place and you start to put things like this. So I kept it in uh, in my mind. Um, and I think uh, one week or two weeks after they, they lost the game and I and I put the local man is please uh, as a tweet. And um, and yeah, after it stays, it stays in my mind. And I and I was thinking the the one day or two day before the 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 game against um, uh, I don't even remember against who we played the the promoted game. Uh, Millwall. Millwall, yeah, Millwall. Uh, so I was thinking uh, I would I I will do a, a t-shirt with this uh, uh, with this on, and if we get promoted, I will I will wear it and. Yes, straight after the final whistle. Uh, obviously, I was screaming and shouting everywhere on the pitch. And then after the first thing I did, I ran into my place in the changing room and I wear the T-shirt. Uh, I put the T-shirt on. So, And that's uh, that's how everything started. And I saw as well that they gave me a little little stick back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's uh, it's it's quite it's quite it's quite funny. I I I have to take this, you know, not too much seriously because it's all about football. It's all about you know some banter between clubs, between players. Nothing too much serious in there. And yeah, it was it was funny, and I think everybody everybody loved it. And I have to say that I was a little bit angry because one week after I saw the club doing a T-shirt with uh, local man is please on it. And they didn't even consult me before. So I was thinking, <laughs> oh, no. where, where, where are my royalties about this? You cannot do a t-shirt like this without asking me the permission. But no, it was, was nice. I imagine you didn't get any Christmas cards from any Bournemouth fans that year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I get a lot of nice, nice words, as, as you, can, you can imagine. But as I said, me, I take this um, not too much serious because... If I take everything like first degree, I would I would be crying every day. So no, I I prefer to laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, um, I just want to jump forward to to next season now because I'm just a bit anxious of time. Obviously, you know, back in the championship as we discussed, it does mean that we'll be facing our local rivals Luton again. Now, obviously, we faced them last time in the championship, no crowds, so you're not going to get that feel of a derby. Uh, uh, do the players sort of do they understand the, the 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 history behind the fixture and how much it means to the fans? And are you looking forward to, to playing in the games as well? Yes, I'm looking forward to playing this game because uh, I, I heard a lot of story about about this, and I think we will make sure that everybody uh, gets the the importance of of this game as well. And uh, we are all looking forward to playing this game at home, but obviously we. We didn't want to play against them because we wanted to stay in the Premier League. But now we get the chance now to play in front of, of the fans uh, this game. And I think this is why you play football, even if it's for, for some people, it's just the the derby Watford against Luton. But for us, it's a, big, uh, it's a big game and it will be a big game. And we will make sure that everybody is ready to fight because I think this day you... You can play bad, uh, but the, at the end of the of the day, we have to we need to have the the three points. So, so yeah, the, we are looking forward for this game. We need uh, we need to be to be ready for for these two two battles. Yeah, now we're looking forward to it as well. It's going to definitely going to be an interesting match in October, and then back in April as well. I think we're playing them at at their ground as well. But uh, just last question now, Cavaselli, um, just. Before we wrap up, have you got a message from Watford fans ahead of the, the new championship season? Um, I can guarantee you that we will not do the same mistakes as, as last season. That even if we are bad, we will uh, we will at least fight for, for each other in the team and, and, and for you. And we will try to, to turn around the, 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 the very poor form, home form that we had last season. Uh, you deserved better, better than that for for your season back in the stadiums, 
So now it's, it's up to us. We will not find any excuses uh, anymore. It's, it's finished. We have one target. We need to go back in the Premier League. And, uh, and we, will, uh, we will make sure that everybody in the changing room is playing for, for the badge, not for, for a transfer or for their individual um, performances. So we will, play, we will play as a team like, like we did the, the first five years when I was uh, at the club. That's fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, Christian, for your time this evening. It's been fantastic yeah. to speak to you and really appreciate it, especially with your schedule over in Austria. So thank you so much for joining us tonight on Voice of a Vic. No, you're welcome. Now I'll go back playing Guno and get some, some money for my French partners. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Christian. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye.